Hey After Buzzers, welcome to Spotlight on Creators and Showrunners. Today I have a very interesting, zany, and dynamic duo behind Free Period, a Disney Channel online show. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome, welcome to Spotlight On. Again, uh, my guests today are Kent Boyd mm -hmm. and Zoe Katz. They are the creative and zany team, I would say, behind this very interesting show. And we'll get into why it's interesting shortly. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having yes, us. Yes, thank you for having us. And, and speaking of intriguing and interesting, uh, we're, we're listening to something right now. And th uh, this is the what? This is the theme song of the show Free Period. He sings it. He wow. is a wonderful singer. No, I think they like show America Who that knew? you don't have to be a great singer. Just <laughs> sing a melody and you're good. Oh, no, I love the lyrics. They're like, don't ask us like what grade we're in. We don't even know. Because no one does know yeah. in those shows. Oh, my gosh. It's just one of those like, mm. we, how old? Exactly. No but, one you know. was high school age. Let's say that. <laughs> Except right. for me. Wait, they're supposed to be in high school? I thought they were in like elementary school. Uh, exactly. We're supposed yeah. to be in fifth grade. Hey, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. perfect. You um, know. Up into interpretation. Yes. Well, it is imagination driven. Yes. Um, that part's a, that's part of the description of the show. It's like, oh, this is a kid's free period. Mm -hmm. um, but please talk about what what is free period? Yeah. Free period is kind of... Uh, your study hall. So like we, me and Zoe were like, what's our favorite part of school? And it was it was either lunch or study hall. And that's kind of where all the craziness can happen or where mm -hmm. your imagination can go wild and free. And no you, homework. No homework. No, And you get to learn about the drama or you get to like doodle or create and be weird. And that's where I spent a lot of my time creating things or making up stories or writing or doing crazy things. And so that's kind of where our inspiration kind of started was... The yeah, randomness. Hall. Where can you be completely random and disconnected and no make rules. it work? Mm, I think that actually totally describes the show. It is rather random. It's very disconnected and random. Now, yes. What <laughs> What prompted the multimedia? Because there's different like stop motion mm -hmm. kind of stuff going mm -hmm. on. There's the one student. How would you describe it? Where the he's, picture? Yes. I'm gonna let Zoe take this because she's very passionate about multi <laughs> uh, this type of media, but. We just wanted to kind of um, experiment with all of them. We think they're really fun, and we our favorite shows growing up as kids had elements of all of that, and I think it was really fun to experiment. But ah. Zoe, take it away. Uh, so uh, I used to do a show on YouTube called Dead Girlfriend. Look it up uh, <laughs> on YouTube. And it was Dead with girlfriend. Barbies uh, because, you know, you don't have to control actors. And uh, when I connected with Kent, uh, we... Uh, just pushed ourselves and we love mixed media and mm -hmm. it's a great way to kind of uh i think it's we're very visual people yes. and uh uh we wanted to find a way for i want to incorporate dolls interacting with humans kent i want to see Puppets. you know humans and and uh photos interact uh garrett clayton plays a character called jenkins who is a photograph of himself mm -hmm. uh just we took photos of him in various positions kind of like tom goes to the mayor mm -hmm. you watch that and mm -hmm. uh yeah so once we went from there we added a monk a guy in a monkey suit and our pup um, i mean one of our oh, favorite characters mm -hmm. was the teacher um who played a puppet and we thought just like having those elements i think will also inspire uh, being creative and nothing's off limits. That's what we wanted to show is like nothing's off limits. We're in free period You can think of anything and anything is fine So we kind of just let our minds just kind of really exploded just everywhere well, That's a good philosophy for people who make stuff because so many times people are are inhibited like oh, that's too weird or that's no I don't want to like there's something that tells you no and right. I love that you guys were like we always say it. yes Let's We see. always say yes. Yeah. And I think that's how we create too. I think it's just like the first thing that we think of whether you know we'll obviously workshop things and we'll go off each other's opinions and that kind of stuff but usually the first idea that we have and that we're really laughing and satisfied with we try to stay as true to that um initial thought as possible mm -hmm. and usually those thoughts are i mean both me and zoe uh, have huge imaginations and we're really really um weird <laughs> uh, <The> child <laughs> yeah and so we just try to stay true to that because i think it can get lost mm. especially you know because when other people step in or this or that or give their opinions it's just like no let's stay true to our first thought because that's what we find we can connect to most and hopefully kids can connect to most and give them more confidence as well too i think i want to see like i want kids to watch it and yeah. say hey maybe i could make exactly that. Oh, uh nice. you know yeah, oh, yeah. oh they there's a uh, somebody just wiggling around a doll like there's, you know, I, I I could do that myself and get together with friends and make it. And Disney was so nice to really let us 
uh, be true to our vision. And we had a lot of control mm -hmm. too, which is probably why the show is so niche, I guess, and very. Oh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a pretty specific, I guess, si style of like absurdist mixed media humor. Right. Which we're, you know, we're trying to. Um, figure out how to let people know that this is all a choice. These are everything that we're choosing here is what we find funny, like growing up on Napoleon Dynamite or Andy Milanakis or kind of those weird, awkward, mm -hmm. you know, but it's all a little intentional. Unpolished. Yeah, I, um, intentionally unpolished, yes. which I know is kind of, a, you know, a new, uh, hard, hard to understand at times, but yes, it is intentionally unpolished. Yeah, but I mean, when if you think it's funny, if you have the right taste, man, you won't stop laughing because... There are some people out there that I'm like, yeah, you enjoy this. You get me and I get you. Cool. It's kind of like a sonar. You're putting out there like, who yes, gets it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we're yes. just trying to find like-minded people sure. so we can kind of keep creating things for mm -hmm. them and they can keep inspiring us. What were some materials or shows that inspired you? You both kind of mentioned a couple things already, but what are some shows and movies that you feel maybe have helped? Yes, form exactly. our brains mm -hmm. um we love cinema i mean we love television we're always do watching we're always trying to see the new things that are coming out but i'd have to say i really enjoy um andy milanakis especially growing up i loved going to friends like just hanging out with the guys and mm -hmm. just just you know laughing about how weird and absurd he was and yeah. it was just so funny to me and in every like um, sketch or you see him walking out and talking to random people and how other people would react to that like not knowing that they were in on the joke but they mm. really were mm -hmm. um, but yeah what about you Zoe? Um, I think we're both really inspired by Tim and Eric yes. and their whole brand uh, our production company Abso. uh, it absolutely uh, does Tim and Eric and Eric Andre show so uh, bang though, bang. those so it was a dream come true for us to work with them because that was a big influence uh, in stylistically when we made the show and mm -hmm. they really understand a uh, low budget they're like, awesome uh, crazy stupid gross comedy yeah we couldn't have done it without them there's some really yeah, really talented inspiring. people over there all right now take me through the process of how this show yeah. started and mm -hmm. how you got attached to disney because disney's not a small name so no it's not and that's that why I, it's kind of crazy that they took a chance on something so weird which i think is really really progressive and fun. But it all started, um, I was in a couple uh, Disney DCOMs, Teen Beach and Teen mm -hmm. Beach 2, where I played a surfer guy named Rascal. Um, and I took my camera to Teen Beach 2 and I just wanted to film some behind the scenes footage of just kind of seeing everybody and and uh, getting kind of like that raw feeling of like, hey, this is a friend and you're a friend, let's see what they're really like. Cause mm -hmm. I wanted to mm -hmm. catch that because everyone is really hysterical on that set and I loved them so much. So I filmed it. And I uh, called up Zoe and I was like, hey, Zoe, what's up, girl? I got some funny footage here. And I know she's a really, really talented editor and she can piece things together and make stories out of nothing. I've seen this girl take a video of a, like a pine cone and make it like <laughs> mo the most riveting thing I've ever Thank seen. Thank you. Um, so I, I mentioned to her, I mentioned it to her and then gave her the footage. And, you know, we kind of collaborated on some things and we wrote a couple of new sketches to put in there. And before the premiere of Teen Beach 2, I was like, let's post this right after. You know, it's Disney's name was all over it. And so I was like, if it gets taken down, it gets taken down. But I was like, I really think that this could open up some cool doors for us. I think this is really fun. And she did an excellent job with putting it together. And so we put it you out did online. A great job Thank you. In it. Thank you. <laughs> and we put it out. And, um, Disney loved it and they actually supported it and they posted it out which is really uncommon for them because mm. they weren't in control of it at all and they're sure. very protective of their name which is why they're so established. Yeah. Yeah, um, like I we like I mean I stole like photos <laughs> from from Disney and just put them in this video. I yeah. mean, yeah, so it, we were really pleased they didn't take it down and uh They loved it. It was basically almost a pilot to the pilot of free period in a way because uh you know, it was Kent and I writing random sketches that somewhat related to a theme, and uh, yeah, yeah, you can check it out online. It's um, on my YouTube page. Um, I think it's called Kent Boy TV. You can check it out there. But from there, they came up to me and were like, "We love it." And then me and Zoe went in for a pitch meeting, pitched them three ideas. One of the ideas was Free Period, and also AV Club, which was a segment that was in Free Period mm. with dolls that um, Zoe really works well with, and um, that's how the show got made. Nice. That's a good like transition story because yeah. I mean I guess it makes sense that they would promote it though because if you guys showed these characters that people know and love, it still promotes them. And well, absolutely, but it's yeah. still, you know you know. But it's, still, it's surprising. Like, right, because they had no hand in it yeah. whatsoever, and it I think was they a were more really... yeah more realistic look at what these you know uh, t 
teen actors are really like and what, yeah. you know, a, a kid can hopefully, I think, see a new side to those actors. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and that's, I think, I think that's really important. Yeah. And I think that's what we tried to bring into Free Period and other things we do, a, a, a non Disney non sitcom way to act it out. Less I overproduced, I think, too. I think kids are smart. Kids are totally different from when we were kids. You know, mm-hmm. we, I mean, obviously we're still in on dabbing and cool things like that. But kids, they, they have technology. They know what's real and they know what's fake. Mm-hmm. And I think, too, like getting in with that um, Team Beach video that we made, it was them really be- being themselves with a friend, mm. with a buddy. And, you know, that's what we wanted to capture with Free Period, too. Like some of those reactions that we filmed were actually just real reactions. And it was just real people being random and goofy. And I think kids can connect to that a bit more mm. especially in this day and age yeah like i think kids have seen it all at this point yes. <laughs> they've seen how a really yeah. awesome explosion and they've seen a, a walk through a door there's a mess on the couch we've seen that so yeah. uh, laugh track, laugh yeah, track. We're, we're you know trying to do something you know, a little more unexpected yeah now uh, you mentioned it's it is like a, it is a sketch comedy. How much is it written? Then go into improv, and how structured is yeah, it when you're that's actually a great filming question. it? Um, it was uh, we wrote all the sketches uh, before. We have a really strong base, of course, just because we're. You know, we have two. How many days did we were on set when we filmed it? Yeah, we filmed it in two days. So we had to be very organized. All the episodes, but yeah. you know, when we have that base, then it was easy for like Zoe to give me directions and for me to kind of improv a lot of it was. Yeah, some... uh, he like Kent's really great at going with any idea, and a lot of some really great moments came from his improv. Like and. But I would say, as far as there are some very structured parts yes. to the show, and then there are moments when we go, okay, we got all the structured part. Let's have Can't fun. Can't be do what you feel. Yeah. And then these episodes range about three to five minutes. Yep. Did you work? How much ahead of time planning did you want control over how long it was? Right. So initially, we um we wanted it to be a fifteen minute long episode one mm, all together okay. but you know disney was like no i think that this will be better in a smaller chunk just to be online i think can, kids can digest that a little bit better but we wrote it in a way that it could be it could stand as a 15 minute episode or it could stand alone in some sketches and just making sure that we were really strategic with how we wrote it and where we placed it so we can kind of mm. morph it and cut it into different chunks but yeah yeah we always made it so that it could be broken up for the web yeah basically yeah and then for now, explain it to viewers out there who haven't maybe had a chance to go look at it yet. Um, when you go and look up Free Period on Disney on YouTube, there's about four episodes that are very clearly the classroom style, and yes. then there's other things called Free Period. So, what right. is that? Right. So, um, we came to them with Free Period, and they were really inspired and they loved our name. Mm-hmm. And they were also introducing, you know, this short form or these shorts that Disney was putting out on their app, and it they were discussing with us, you know, like, we really love the name of Free Period. Could we name the whole thing under the umbrella of Free Mm. Period and still have your name as Free Period? And both me and Zoe talked about it, and we're like, yeah, I think that would be totally fine, and Mm -hmm. it'd be great publicity for us as well. Um, So, yes, the whole program itself is called Free Period, and our show is called Free Period. So, yeah, we were flattered, and we think that it's cool that Disney, like, loved the name that much, and I think, yeah. That's yeah, pretty much so it. Yes, Zoe? Free period, free period. <laughs> um, well, you guys are kind of the gateway drug because yes, you're the first yes. episodes that people see when they go Ooh. look at free period. Oh, Scary. yeah. Scary. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely <laughs> pushing it, which I think is, I mean, watching the other shorts, they're beautiful. Uh, mm-hmm. I've seen a couple of them. There's a great one. Uh, a, a friend of mine, Chris Scott, who choreographed Teen Beach um, mm-hmm. and Teen Beach 2, uh, wrote a short that has a beautiful dance sequence at the end and it's 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 stunning it's shot great it's Mm -hmm. it's got a really beautiful story check that out as well um but they range they're so different you know and all this Mm -hmm. ours is definitely the most bizarre and and um quirky yeah (laughs) i'd have to say a couple other words but quirky for sure um but i think that they're trying to be different i think disney's trying to be uh, trying to get in with those nerds trying to get in with those guys trying to get Mm -hmm. into a different demographic which i think is cool i would have watched this show um if i was growing up that's for sure and that's something that we tried to make sure like zoe would you watch this if you were a kid and she'd be like yeah All right, then we're doing it right and then yeah you guys have very unique characters as well you want to talk about what kind of characters i mean you've mentioned a co- what you've had in there but talk a little bit more of the yeah. development of 
why maybe you use something versus something else or what character didn't make it in yeah oh i mean the puppet's name was mr locker i think after one of my first grade teachers um that's kind of an unfortunate last name or amazing Mr. Locker, that's such a classic. You gotta day. work in a school. You yeah. can't yes. anywhere else. Oh, or a gym. Or, a gym. <laughs> or you can be a sports train star? S- train station. They yeah. Have lockers. Uh, anyway, yeah, anyway. yeah, it's close. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. But uh, one of my favorite character names that we came up with was um, I let a farta just because I love any fart jokes that are out there, and I thought that was pretty fun. And she's just a character that farts a lot, which I mean, hopefully you find that funny because we did. Yeah, that character was definitely based from the name. Yes, and, mm-hmm. and the rest came. Um, but that is a, a a real name of uh, my friend growing up. His mom <laughs> told me she grew up with an I let a farta, and so, then I was like that. I needs to be in I there. I think wow. it's so it, it, it's not I'm, I'm 50% sure that there's a woman named Iletta Farda. We out love there. you, Iletta. This is for we you, love baby you. girl. Thank you. We love um, farts. You should talk about um John DeLuca and his role and his mother's role. Uh, yes, okay. So, uh we were very inspired by the idea <laughs> of first of all, um mixed raced families, which mm-hmm. is awesome. We so support that. Um so uh I I just think we thought it would be so funny to have a parent in the class just you know to have a different level Mm -hmm. and in any of the sketches if we needed an adult figure there she would be yes uh so john deluca plays this character brett and he's a super hot he's jock yeah we were like we need the hottest guy in the school (laughs) to have a mom right by him yeah and his mom his his mom's name is mrs brett's mom (laughs) classic Um, and it she is we found, tell her about how we found her yeah we found her from la casting just random like her we, name is her uh her name is grace Guada, her Guada last name. Hara, La, yes, i believe yes uh i could be pronouncing it wrong no you're not but she's probably not watching this <laughs> but we miss her um, um, but she you. was so amazing we found her from la casting and she just submitted us a video like completely blind we had no idea what to expect and it might have been her first acting gig i think this was but she totally killed it oh i mean God. i really she's, she's the star she was the star i mean for us we were like we couldn't stop no, watching mrs kent is the star but my god she's <laughs> she's, a she's right diva. up there on the, she on, yeah was awesome yeah she was amazing but then we also uh we got a lot of my friends from team beach okay. to come in you know so we got garrett we got john deluca mm-hmm. we got chrissy fit who was phenomenal as loaf mm-hmm. we yeah, wanted a sporty awesome. guy yeah. a sporty girl in there because we don't yeah. feel like that's shown enough like girls can be athletic and cool and hip and um molly gray who mm-hmm. also was in Teen Beach. She plays um, Natalia, or Not an Alien, where mm-hmm. she plays um, an alien girl, which Zoe has an obsession with aliens and slash robots. I, I, I think that aliens are robots. I don't know She the doesn't difference. understand the difference, so the we've same. had a, many a conversations that they are extremely different. But she's an alien. <laughs> yes, with a robot voice. Yes, she yes. has a slight and robot a battery voice. pack and a battery pack <laughs> yeah. that can send the monkey off to space. I know that yes. there's one of the instances where I thought an alien was a robot, but whatever. it's okay. It's okay. And our Enjoy. that's another show to discuss. Yes, that'll be the yes. spinoff. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And then we had a monkey, and we had a couple. <laughs> we had a monkey from our. He was um, amazing. Played by Mike Kurtz. He's who's amazing. The best guy in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Thank then you. we had some special guests from Disney, like Jess, uh, Jessica Garcia, who's mm-hmm. phenomenal. And then we had Ricky, and then we had Piper, who was mm-hmm. also from Team Beach, um, just kind of come in and give us some a little shimmy, and they were out. It was good. Yeah. Speaking of shimming, uh, uh-huh. you have a background in dance. Oh, I sure do. Yes, and then you were able to incorporate Show dance us. into this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. speaking of robots, you could do the robot. I know. You that in your but limited we're space. totally into yeah. this movie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Egyptian is back, you guys. It's coming yeah. back and it's coming strong. But yes, I grew up dancing. And we got, I was like, we need to have some dance elements. And, and of course, you know, if we get more episodes, there will definitely be, I'm sure, oh, yeah. a huge musical number. He's got to be dancing. Oh. But you, do, you can see Kent uh, fake bad dance there in was a, a dance a battle, dance battle yep. yes, with some mascots. Which yep. got pretty intense. Oh, yeah? Mm. Yeah, you know, just... I um, won't tell you who wins. <laughs> it was either... I know, me. you had an epic jump there. You threw your head back yes. and everything. Oh, yeah, yes. That's... Um... Kent will do backflips whenever he can. <laughs> Oh, you had to. 
I mean, I grew up dancing. Yeah. I love dancing. Like, it's nothing. Yeah. I love moving my body. Yeah. I love music. I love dancing. It's And you did bun heads. Yes. I think you can dance. Yeah. Just a little I, bit of dance back Yeah, there. and Team Beach had some great dancing yep. in it. I've been dancing since I was a kid, and it's been a huge passion of mine, and hopefully it can stay in my career mm -hmm. as I move forward. But I love dancing. I love musicals. I mean, there's so many comedies out there. They always have a musical number with dancing because it's funny and awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it well, is. you sing in the intro, but you don't so much dance in the theme song right. so much. But right. Yeah. I think that the dancing will come later okay you know that'll be closing credits yeah kind of absolutely thing. but it'll be like legit dancing hopefully because oh, the dance battle was very much like being funny and ridiculous and kind of crazy but yeah i'm sure there's dancing in the future of free period nice yeah. now you you said you brought a bunch of people from uh uh teen beach now could you te they already kind of know how to dance so yeah. you could, it'd be pretty easy transition for a dance dancers. number right i mean molly gray was also on the same mm -hmm. show as me on so you think you can dance and chrissy was in pitch perfect mm -hmm. and she's like moving and grooving in that movie and they're they're <laughs> all great dancers so i'm sure we could get a little flash mob mm -hmm. ensemble in there one day now, what else are you guys working on right now? Because those it's four episodes, yeah, yes. pretty much. Um, are there more coming? Are you working on them? What's yeah, the status? I mean, we're, we're working on them. We're still waiting to see how this these kind of episodes do. So please mm -hmm. watch. Please leave your comments. We're still, you know, like, we're still trying to get them up. And we're still trying to spread it out to the masses. And in front of the right audience, I think, too, is what's most mm -hmm. important to mm -hmm. me and Zoe, is getting it in front of the people that respect it and think it's funny. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I hope... Uh, you know, if you're a fan of Teen Beach, um, you may not... Oh, it's very you, different than Teen it's Beach. Very, yes, that's what I mean to say. It's very different than Teen Beach, but it is the a lot of the cast of Teen Beach. Right. I think that's been a little confusing. It, but yeah. it's nothing like Teen Beach. But it, you just have to have a, a sense of humor to watch it, for sure. And we're just really <laughs> trying to push it and promote it. And, you know, me and Zoe have a couple other things in the works that we're still working on. So hopefully you'll be seeing more of us soon. Mm -hmm. And I um, think you'll definitely be seeing more of Kent and, yeah. uh, in some fun situations. Yeah, so, yeah. There's some stuff, so that's good. All right, well, yeah, because comedy is really tricky. Of It's very subjective. It's so subjective, which I think is awesome because I also think dance is super subjective. And that's True. why I think like I love comedy so much because it's like either you're going to think it's funny or you don't. And it doesn't hurt my feelings or anyone else's. Yeah, but yeah. just come. We want the people that like yeah. it to come. Well, speaking of hurt feelings, do you guys ever mm -hmm. read the comment? I mean, you yes. said really promised you. What do you think of those comments? Because there are some no, there are, misses on there. Oh, oh my God. What okay, people think. This is the thing. Me and Zoe had a, a really, really heart-to-heart, soul-searching moment after those comments came out. And I was like, Zoe, get ready for some haters. Because it's I kind of... I love haters. It's, it's the kinda, internet. Right. And they feel free to do it. They feel free. But the thing is, too, I feel like as free period, if you were to, you know, connect it to like a geeky kid coming into mm. a new private school ah. at Disney, they're mm. going to... It's not going to be... It's going to be a little intimidating. It's not going to be the warmest of welcomings. I think it's just going to take some time mm. for that nerd to kind of, you know, win the spelling bee and make friends and do people. <laughs> people's homework but mm -hmm. um yeah if it was a little discouraging and it kind of was like ooh, okay well i think if you're not if you don't have haters then who are you yeah then you're not you're doing no anything one. With it. like yeah. you're not creating an opinion yeah and i'd totally. rather create an opinion than not so I, I find that to i don't Motivate. think that's that bad and you know kent has experience in yeah. you know uh, in the comment section and it's like if it's better i think to have comments than no than comments no, no comments well, it, you prompted a reaction regardless right. of good or bad you made somebody think something yes. feel something that they felt they had to express it right right and which is always fun but we do you know there we would like more people to come to kind of keep supporting and keep yeah. pushing for it um so please please you know keep watching and keep commenting and yeah like if you're into like share you know it. um you know like cartoons or yep. if you're into like a Tim and Eric kind of style deal or, or Andy Milanakis watch the show if you're yeah. not you probably won't like it and that's fine but, and that's okay but the thing is too <laughs> I think that we always forget you know this is for kids and we actually made this show for boys ages like 9 to 14 mm -hmm. but as I'm watching it um grown grown adults can enjoy this which i think is fun as well too i think you know there's obviously a lot of kids probably our age a lot of our friends are like this show is awesome so i mean if you're 18 19 20 21 22 23 mm -hmm. 24 25 26 27 yeah. 28 29 30 plus you could watch it what and, do your parents think of it oh my dad <laughs> my dad loves it my my, my parents mother, love it yeah <laughs> My mother's like, this is interesting. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get you. I see you, you preschool teacher. No, <laughs> I see you. No, but, you know, it's just, it's subjective. But mm -hmm. she's, they love it. They think it's fun. They oh, think it's yeah. quirky. My dad will will buy any 
any <laughs> free period merchandise. He He's it. like number one. Fan. He, there's merchandise. Oh, I. Oh, there yeah. will be to come. Oh yeah, there's a mug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And there's also oh, yeah. we, we just a did a really cool photo shoot for it that'll be coming out as well too to kind of show the audience and viewers mm-hmm. like how really weird me and Zoe are. Mm -hmm. You know, we both really have a a passion for fashion, as (laughs) they say, and we have a really retro twist. I think one of our favorite things about the show is how it's stylized and how it has a bit of that vintage flair. And that's kind of what I grew up in, and it's kind of what my parents were. I mean, my dad was an identical twin with an afro. Like, he was a cool dude. (laughs) And um, we wanted to bring that in, and I think, too, with this photo shoot, we got to kind of show, like, um, the style that we really enjoy and the mm-hmm. kitschiness that we really are and you know walk into any of our apartments and you'd be like whoa these people definitely have taste it may depend if you like the taste or not and that's kind of how we um, base our lives we just do what we really like and we hope that you know you'll come on board or you're, you won't you know mm-hmm. it's not for everyone which it's yeah yeah, I don't know. Your house Agreed. has so many rainbows <laughs> in it. This, if you walk into this girl's house, there are rainbows crazy. everywhere. Shower curtain, uh, <laughs> her bedspread, her m- pictures. It's, it's very much a themed apartment, <laughs> and I have to tell uh, anyone new that I'm talking to or a date per se. I have to say, hey, She's I got have a, a wheelchair in my apartment, uh, and I'm not weird. <laughs> Listen, we've had a lot and of fun a lot in of that trinkets. wheelchair. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and when you like, yeah. Mm, okay, we'll we'll leave that. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, so, it's yeah, like it's a skateboard with anything. wheels. Yes, this is true. Yeah. You could do some good, steady camera shots. Uh, and hello. Wheelchair. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Grab a wheelchair. Resource have some fun. <laughs> yes. Play with your grandma in it. It's great. <laughs> now, since you both have such unique and different kind of humor sensibilities, yes. and maybe fellow peers, what got you started working together? And like, what was the first thing that you're like, oh my gosh, we have to make something. Oh, I knew day one from meeting him. <laughs> and then how'd you guys meet oh, them, too? That, that sounds like a great setup. It's no, like, no, we, we just met through a mutual friend, and um, I was always really inspired by Zoe. I think, it, you know, we had known each other for about a year or so before we actually started working together, mm-hmm. and I was always really supportive of her shows that she she was making. I was really interested, and yeah, I remember was one, really Christmas, helpful. one Christmas I took it home and showed my whole family and sent oh her a video God, yes. of it, because I really believed in it, and I really believe in her, and I think she's really talented at what she does and mm-hmm. what she has to say. I'm just, I'm a big supporter of anyone who's kind of fearless and has mm-hmm. an opinion, mm-hmm. um, but also is open. Like, she's one of the most open people to other things. You know, she, won't, she accepts it all, and I think mm-hmm. I do as well, but... Yeah, you really you, do. You just have to have an opinion about life and you have to have, um, yeah, like intention. And I think she lives her life with a lot of intention. And I think that's really deep and great. Oh but thank you. You're no, welcome. I You're think welcome. he, uh, when we met each other, I knew that Kent, uh, was, uh, really super hardworking and mm-hmm. talented. Uh, and even though we weren't very, mm-hmm. we, we weren't like super best friends mm-hmm. when we met, I think we both, uh, he was really helpful with me getting my, uh, other, you know, YouTube thing started, and so uh, when we started trying to work together, it flowed really well yeah. because he totally, he's so great at just riffing and everything he says. Is, yeah, is, it just works. Yeah, it just works. It just works, and I think too, it was, it was just same sense of humor. I love collaborating, and Zoe loves to tell me what to do. I'm just kidding, but sometimes <laughs> that she does. That is true. Yeah. Well, I mean, Zoe, you do write, produce, yeah, direct, uh-huh. and edit, so um, I think you kind of have some leverage I'm to tell me what to do. And I'm I amazing. love listening. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. No, he's so easy yeah. to direct. He's like, and I, I like... And this is a dance background, he's for like, sure. Yeah, he's, he's like Fred Armisen in the mm, way that he'll just say, like, he can talk about a mug and Forever. forever and I'll edit that damn thing forever. <laughs> forever. So I think that's how uh, why it works well. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I think it's just too like being mm-hmm. a dancer it's just like um going in and working with the choreographer mm-hmm. it was like always trying to um anticipate a move that they made and mm. then always trying to make their vision better than they thought it was going to be. Oh, and if you okay. did if you could do that then you were a good dancer in my opinion and that's why I think it's fun and easy <laughs> because I've been doing it for a while. Easy. Well, how easy is it <laughs> since you both wear very mini yeah. hats on this show? Oh yeah, that was hard. Oh. It was definitely challenging. I don't think we could have we could have not done it with without Apso. Um, I think we might have absolutely died. we needed them. <laughs> uh-huh. you know, oh yeah, they were amazing because if without them, it would have just been Kent and I honestly building the sets and and you know sewing costumes. So right. and they, they were mm-hmm. amazing and totally understood. 
uh, the project. Yeah, and then also just getting like-minded people too <clears throat> yeah. that were passionate about the project, and you know, we just had to make sure that we came to the meetings and to the things knowing what we wanted and being yeah. very, we're very organized, and I think um, that's really, really helpful for such newcomers like us. It's like we go and we're already anticipating what you're saying, and maybe we'll throw it out there and, or maybe we'll just listen, but we're ready. Um, and I think it just kind of comes with like uh, being somewhat fresh. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if we're, uh, you know, we're just um, willing to work and we really, we were hardworking. Did you find that you were able to communicate your ideas enough to those you were working with? Because it is such a yeah, totally. particular Good idea. Good question, because I find that this is a hard yeah. thing in life. Yeah, that's To great. make sure that people understand the vision, because they'll look at you and they'll go, yes, yes. And then, <laughs> then two weeks later when you see it and we're like, no, no, <laughs> I no. know. It's like only you really know your yeah. own vision. Right. And so you got to convey it well. But that's why I think, you know, Zoe is like, I gotta do it. Yeah. I gotta edit it. I gotta, mm -hmm. you know, it was really helpful for her to, you know, I was on set and she was telling everyone what to do. And, you know, there were times where I'd come back and be like, you know, playing with her and riffing off her and making, mm -hmm. giving my input on things. But she was, I was like, do you, do you think you have it? Like, do you think you have it? And she's like, I think I have it. I was like, let's move on. You okay. know what I mean? Because she knew what she wanted and she knew how the show was. And it, yeah, you definitely have to have a, a, a grip of it, but it has to be loose enough for new ideas to flow mm -hmm. in and out. But as long as there's a stable base. Yeah, but we did a lot of prep work as yeah. far as like, you know, we really spent time with colors. Oh, and colors. Talk about the colors. We yeah. can talk about colors forever. Oh, God, colors. Uh, we love, I hated coloring. <laughs> I don't know why I like colors. Uh, I think because Kent's super into design yeah. and uh, the aesthetic of things. Yeah, I think it's really. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. I so think. So we were. So I think we were super clear. You know when when going yeah. into pre-production. Oh, and mm -hmm. Corey, our guy, our set set decorator, he was just like, that was a, my main thing. I was like, this has got to look beautiful. This has got to look specific and weird. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, for a while we were playing with different ideas, and Zoe was like, the whole. Everything needs to be like a cartoon. Everything needs to be on the wall. It needs to be mm. two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, that's cheap and good. Let's do it. Um, and then Corey came in, and he just kind of, like, brought it to life. And we gave him our color palette, and we gave him the ideas. And, you know, even down to, like, the wood grain on the desk, which was such a, like, thing yeah, that I Yeah, I'm glad you fought for that. Because it was Ooh. just, like, just that small little thing gives it the, a little bit more of a character to me. Because mm -hmm. um, then be your fun. environment is a thing, yeah. too. It's not just there right right yeah. right and we're hoping that the audience or the, the viewers can like kind of pick up on those little things yeah. or just kind of like the dinosaur the 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 paintings in the background or the maps or everything was yeah like about. look for the hidden kent there's yeah. a hidden kent <laughs> everywhere i mean yeah it's fun it's a it's in that those are the types of movies that inspire us like we just watched the lobster or anything like wes anderson like it's just like those people live with intention like mm -hmm. they are really brilliant and smart and intelligent yeah. people they have a very distinctive voice, yeah. and it sounds like you both do as well. Yeah, we, we try. We try. And now, Zoe, uh, how, does that help that in directing you're also editing? So as you're going along, are you, like, thinking of your edits then? Yeah, that helps so much. and that's Does it? Yeah, it helps. That's, I think, why we are able to complete this task do quickly. You, I have a question. Did it ever felt like, did it feel like it ever hindered you? No. <laughs> Only helped. <laughs> Only helped. Cool. I know exactly what I... Well, I know what I, I don't know what anyone else wants, but I know if I it, I know exactly when we need to move on because I edit. It right. just right. really helps. You know and if I, you've gotten the shot, mm -hmm. you know exactly. I what know the look which is. take okay. I'll use when we're filming it. Mm. True. Okay. You yeah. always I could be did. like, we can delete the first ten. I don't even want to look at them. It's take eleven. <laughs> like, I, like that's yeah. why editing is helpful. And that's why helpful. it worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did we did have a rough draft where you know she was showing it to me, and I think there was a. a, a a lot of farts in it, and I think we had to edit some farts <laughs> out before we turned it into Disney. Oh, yeah, we did have to take some farts out. Um, <laughs> Too much farting. Anything else you had to censor yourselves on? Because it was, I mean, though you, yeah. it sounds like you had a lot of uh, freedom to do what yes, you wanted with it, but did. it's still part of Disney. Right. Was there other moments you had to censor yourselves? Actually, I'd have to really, like, um, give props to Disney. I think that they did. We gave them our script, obviously, and it was pretty true to the script. Um, but they were like, we love it. We love how free we want this to be. They kept pushing weirder, weirder, mm -hmm. more disconnected, more disconnected. And we're like, you really want us to go there? You Like, are you sure? And they were. And I think, like, they were so open. I mean, obviously, there's, you know, it's got to stay PG. But that was easy for us. Yeah. And actually, it's actually really challenging sometimes, too. I don't know why I said it was easy. Because I felt like that, it to stay appropriate, but still... 
Right, because yeah, it's, like, it's, it's I think we, we wanted it to be enjoyable for All a twenty-year-old stoner at, and a mm-hmm. child. Right. Uh, so and and bring in some humor that adults would enjoy. So that was difficult, but I don't think we submitted anything to them that we thought would be too inappropriate. And they're very minor things that they had issues with. Sure. Yeah. No, they were so hands off, and they were. I think they're really um, seeing where this generation is moving, and they're trying mm. to give the power to. Um, the people that are actually living the lives, the, mm-hmm. like I think the the creators, I think that they're really trying to let their focus shine through because with YouTube, man, you can post anything and you can just exactly. blast it out and it can go viral and it's there's not all these people involved, there's not all these producers involved in those mm-hmm. YouTube videos that everyone loves so much. It's just kind of people being people. Yeah. Now you both kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but what advice would you have for filmmakers out there, young, old, whatever age, but people who maybe want to make something? Um, I think. I think um, have a strong opinion and um, always know you don't know. Like you just don't know. You don't mm-hmm. know anything. Don't act like you do. Cause I don't. And it's just like you just go and you go, hey, this is my opinion. I'm open to things and I'm willing mm-hmm. to listen, but like this is what I feel. But yeah, I know. I love ideas. I love collaborating and listening and, and yeah. I think people out there are really smart and intelligent and I think they're all over, but believe in yourself. Definitely is the first thing. And then, you know, humble yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Zoe, yes. what's yours? Preach. <laughs> Mine would be uh, if you want to do something within whatever industry or anything creative, uh, do it yourself. Or mm-hmm. or if you say you're going to do it, actually That's do it. That's the thing. Do mm-hmm. it. Because, and do it on time. Mm-hmm. Right. I think the reason why a lot of people haven't seen success uh, if they're trying to make their own stuff is because they're, you know, just talking about it. And yeah, uh, yeah I'd say do it and work super hard. You don't, if you have a little tiny, tiny bit of talent or any idea, you should make it. You can make because it. Because you never know you what never could happen, know. but make it. And, if, and just think it's funny. You got to think Don't it's funny. Don't be afraid of what other people dramatic. say. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you yeah. both have covered the idea of you should make it what you think is funny, not what you're trying to f- make funny for other people. Right. Because the right. right people will find it. Right, right. And that's also still something that I had many conversations with Zoe about. It's like, do you create art for yourself or for the masses? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a balance because you want it to be connectable to many people, but mm-hmm. you also want to connect to it yourself. Yeah. So it's, I think, something that we're learning as we grow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, well, we're pretty much at the end, actually. Now, yes. um, what are some other projects right now that I, you've already said a little bit, but uh, where can people find this? What yes. can you tell people that you're doing next yeah. if you can? Um, there's not a lot. that w- There's some stuff that we're working on that we can't discuss yet, but okay. you can find um, – you can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch the deleted undercover found footage of Team Beach 2 at Kent Boyd TV. You can also check me out on social media. Um, it's all Kent underscore Boyd for my Instagram, for my Twitter, and for my Snapchat, which it probably will be non-existent soon, but sad. <laughs> And um, yeah, you can see Free Period on Disney Channel. Um, you can go to, you can just Google YouTube search Free Period Disney. And it's also on their app as mm-hmm. well that you can kind of check out. And please watch those first four episodes. Zoe, you, I know you got some handles in there. Throw them out there, baby girl. All right, everybody get ready. <laughs> All my fans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Twitter at having fun online. She I is am having, having fun, fun online. I'm That's having a decent That's time online. That's a creative online. name. I like Thank that. Thank you. It really she, explains my personality. I'm her, having a good time. Oh my god, her Instagram. <laughs> I, I must be the only person, but like it is you the are. funniest thing to me. <laughs> Thank you. I love you so much. Um, yeah, follow me, having fun online. Uh, also, check me out, Zoe Cats on Instagram. Check it out. And, and Dead, Dead Girlfriend. Girlfriend on YouTube. Check it out. Now, I have one more question now watching you guys interact with each other. How many times did you have to hold back and stifle the laughter on set? Too much. Yourselves and the <laughs> rest of the people there. Um, well, it's usually not the rest of the people because <laughs> they don't get it. But some do. And we like to keep those people around. And then we like to keep the people that don't get it around, too. So we, you know. But, yeah. We definitely, I think, we oh definitely have a very much of like a sibling connection. Like, we love, we just, we definitely were either the same person or... Yeah, I don't and know. maybe we were a part of the same person <laughs> back in the day. Mm-hmm. That'll be our next show. 
There you go. You have a brand new idea. Yeah, check well, that out online. We've got too many ideas. That's the thing. Well, no, you got to keep them coming so you have plenty of material to work with. Thank you so much for not, coming. I don't know. Thank uh, you. Thank again, you for having us. Of course. Of course. It was a pleasure. Um, so, yeah, guys, today I was talking with Kent Boyd and Zoe Katz of Free Period, which is Disney Online. Uh, my name is Carrie Lane. You can find me online at Carrie D. Lane. That's K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. Uh, thank you so much for watching Spotlight on Showrunner and creators it's been a pleasure talking <laughs> with such interesting people no it's great i love it because <laughs> thank you people, so much excellent we won't advice stop for filmmakers and just uh, anybody creative yeah, out there just of, humans in exactly life. exactly just be, be you. free be you be free perfect. yes again thank you so much for watching give a video a thumbs up uh and uh comment down below because yes they do read the comments yeah the negative ones and too <laughs> <Bring> itunes <laughs> five stars uh yep check them out at free period on uh youtube at just add the disney channel you'll find it yep uh, again thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time bye from executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.